So you've just downloaded Streamlabs and now you're ready to start setting up your live stream. But before you go ahead and press the almighty go live button, you're going to want to change some settings. In this video, I'm going to show you the exact settings that I use to stream on Twitch through Streamlabs. For those of you that don't know me, my name is Leon Bratz and as well as making YouTube videos on here, I also stream on Twitch as a musician. I go live every Wednesday, Friday and Saturday. A link to that is in the description below the video. Just before we get into the video, I want to say a huge thank you to the sponsor of the video owned.tv owned.tv is the place for all of your streaming needs they've got you completely covered with overlays stream designs alerts emotes twitch panels and much much more regardless of the streaming platform or software that you use all of owns products will work without hesitation so go and do what over 100,000 streamers have already done and pick up your designs today using the link in the description does help this channel at no extra cost to yourself and whilst you're there you can use code leon Bratz for 50 percent off of your order yeah 50 percent so which settings should you be using for Streamlabs? Let's jump onto the PC and let's take a look. Okay, we're onto the PC now and the first thing that you're gonna want to do is run a speed test. Just come to speedtest.net and click go. So after this is finished, you wanna pay attention to the upload speed just here. The bitrate is in kilobits per second and your upload speed is in megabits per second. Every one megabit is a thousand kilobits. So this is essentially 18,000 kilobits. So that's what you wanna pay attention to. Then the next thing you wanna come over to is this website here. And this is stream.twitch.tv forward slash encoding. This is gonna give you which settings you should be using. If this number is only like six to 10 and it's pretty low, then I would 100% use the 30 FPS setting. So once you've got those two websites open in your browser, the next thing we're going to do is come over to Streamlabs, come down to the bottom left hand corner, click on the settings and open up this window here. Everything in the general, we can just leave it as it is for now. We don't need to worry about that. And if we come down to the output settings, I currently stream in 1080p 30 FPS. This has been absolutely fine for me. I've had no issues whatsoever. So if we come back over to the Streamlabs settings just here, click on output mode and make sure this is set to advanced. Then we're gonna to go to streaming. Audio track is gonna be one. That's absolutely fine, leave it on one. And then the encoder is hardware NVENC new. This is the one I use. This is the best one to use. If you want to learn a little bit more about encoding and what each one does, you've got software x264. This just basically means it uses the CPU and hardware NVENC new it comes from a little encoding slot in your graphics card. For me, I use hardware NVENC new. Then leave this one ticks here. Then the rate control, we're going to come and check over here. Rate control is CBR. This means controlled bit rate. Then our bit rate, like it says here, 4,500. Put that in there. Keyframe interval two seconds preset quality profile high then come down a little bit further both of these are enabled gpu is zero and max b frames is set to two so once those are in then we're going to come to the video tab here we're going to put in the base canvas resolution as 1920 by 1080 and then the output scaled resolution i would highly recommend that you set the output scaled resolution to 720. i've got mine set to 1080 at the moment the reason I've got mine set to 1080 is because I'm partnered. Once you are partnered on Twitch, this means that your viewers can choose which quality setting that they actually watch the stream in. This is why I've now kept my output resolution to 1080 because they can choose 720 if they need to. Downscale filter, this depends on how well your PC actually handles stuff and the kind of build of your PC. I've got mine on Lengzos. You can use Bicubic if you want. FPS type, we're gonna leave this on common FPS values and we're gonna set this to 30 to match this one here. If you're running 60 FPS, you change this to 60 and then you change the bitrate as well. The next setting that you're gonna to want to do is just go below this video and click enable on the like button. Back to the video. Next, we're gonna to come to the audio tab. The sample rate, I would leave this as 44.1 kilohertz. Channels, I'm using stereo, but I was using mono. Being a musician, I'm now actually running stuff through Ableton, which is a music software. So that requires me to have a stereo output. However, I was using mono before. I was running one guitar and one microphone to an audio interface. They were both mono channels. If you have this set to stereo and you're using mono tracks, you will only have the left-hand side of your headphones working. Then in desktop audio device, you are going to want to choose your main audio 
interface. I use an Audient ID14, so I would have this set to output one and two. However, I'm currently using Ableton, so I'm now using these voice meter inputs just here. And your mic inputs, this would be input one and two from my Audient ID14. That would match up the output of the ID14 as well up here. Next, we are going to click on stream, and then we're gonna click on streaming services for the stream type, Twitch, and then we are going to just click on auto for the server, which is fine. And then we need to load in our stream key. So if we go over to Twitch now and let's load up the dashboard, come over to preferences and click on channel. And then this is your primary stream key up here. Copy this, just press copy on that and then come back over to the settings here. And then you're just gonna paste the stream key in there. So next, if we click on the advanced section just here, and then I'm just gonna leave this on normal for the process priority. Video, I've got MV12, 601 for the color space, and we have partial there. Force GPU as render device as well. And these are pretty much just default, I think. Stream delay, don't need that. Um, automatically reconnect, have this enabled, just in case you ever DC, if you disconnect. Um, you can have retry, delay, 10 seconds. I've got maximum of 30 retries. And that is pretty much it for that. If we come back over to the output tab once again, and if you ever wanna record videos, then you just need to do these settings as well. So we've gone from streaming, we've done all those, and we just need to click on recording and put in the same details. So leave this on standard, this type here. Enter your recording path for your videos, where you want them to go to. Recording format is in MP4, recording hardware NVENC new. Just match these up with the settings that we've already done on the streaming tab. This is CBR 4500. Two, quality, high. Look ahead off, this should actually be off in the streaming one as well. I know I said earlier, leave it on, it needs to be off. Psycho visual tuning on. GPU zero, max B frames two. So there we go, those were my settings for Streamlabs. You can use these for OBS as well. You just need to go into the settings and put exactly the same things in. If you did find value within this video, then please do smash that thumbs up button as hard as you can. Subscribe down below for more content like this every single week. If there's anything you think I've missed out or you want to leave a comment or you've got some questions, then please do leave them in the comments section below. If not, come and join the Discord. We've got nearly 600 people in there already. I shall see you guys next week for the next video. Peace.